loss prevention. Uh, why do we need it? The uh, ship is uh, baptized by a beautiful uh, godmother. We got the local priest to say a prayer. We have St. Nicholas uh, nailed on the bridge. So why do we need all this? What other measures could we need? Humans in our majority, uh, we are positive thinking creatures. Uh, but experience have uh, taught every positive person that this is not the case. Risks are there. They need to be managed and not only in the shipping industry, but also in all other industries. Uh, you need a, a strategy to control the risks and accept only the ones that you consider minor. At least you're considering minor uh, when you're taking the risk on, but uh, it's proven that later on they're not minor. Uh, there should be no confusion with insurance. Insurance is a transfer mechanism uh, that you transfer the risk. You don't lose prevent or mitigate. Uh, that's a, a bit cruel if you call insurance uh, loss mitigation. This is purely an accounting exercise. Uh, in our role as adjusters, we have seen uh, many casualties and are in a position to advise not only on matters of causation, uh, but also other issues. What we consider important is casualty management, i.e. once the casualty does arise and you do have a casualty, what do you do then to mitigate your losses? I will not go into the role of the adjusters. Uh, that was done by my colleagues, uh, Bogart Fischer and Ronaldo Drege under the CSC members meeting in January under the Association of uh, Average Adjusters. And they explain how the role of the adjuster has evolved over the last 150 years. Uh, adjusters are not the only thing that has evolved uh, the last few years. Ships have also evolved, and we are now walking into the so-called mega container ship era. These are the size of ships, which are 24, 26,000 TUs, and you can see there the CMA CGM uh, Jacques Sade, which is an LNG-powered ship of 24,000 TU. These ships are not only here. More are being ordered, as uh, the news report and classification societies are taking some steps to make additional safety considerations for these ships. And only time will tell about how effective uh, these uh, measures will be. You see there the latest class of MSC ship with the latest firefighting equipment. Technologies are there to assist these big ships. We heard today about artificial intelligence, smart tools, and all the flags and automation is there to enable these uh, huge ships to go into a port, deliver the cargo, and carry more and more and more cargo. Economies of scale. We thought for the purpose of this presentation, we go into the mega container ship, as you have probably figured out by now, the mega container ship accidents. Uh, Less fuel, better economy, better carbon footprint. We've heard today all the discussions about how the carbon footprint and everything is important. So bigger ships carrying more cargo, higher values. Risk is the probability of something going wrong multiplied with the value of the properties at risk. Uh, you don't have to be John Nash to do the maths on that one. I mean, if you have a ship carrying 750 million uh, dollars worth of cargo than you can imagine. And this is just, we're talking about the size of the ship. We're not factoring in the firefighting capabilities of the ships. We're not factoring in their so-called optimized ballast arrangements, uh, which you can imagine when the ship is aground. Uh, you can see in the picture there, the CCNI Arauco, which caught fire in the port of Hamburg, that vessel required not only all the firefighting capabilities of the ship, required all the firefighting capabilities of the port of Hamburg, required all the firefighting capabilities of all the area and the vicinity of Hamburg. Every fire brigade from every village around Hamburg was there fighting that fire in the port. And the expense was such that the Havaria Commando, which was responsible for that, has appointed us to collect security for those expenses on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany. It made us really popular with our colleagues in Hamburg that uh, the Havaria Commando and the Federal Republic of Germany appointed us, but that's another issue. Uh, 
that was a clear case of how difficult it is, even with the best case scenario, to firefight, to firefight the ships. Uh, obviously, things have been going wrong with the container ships. Four fires the last uh, few years. Uh, our office was involved in, in two of them. And we have uh, warnings and uh, bells sound from Ayumi, which is the International Union of Marine Insurance. Hellehammer putting a number on this, saying that they will exceed $1 billion. So what measures can we take to prevent these losses, to not have uh, these fires? Some line operators have decided to put heavy penalties on people declaring uh, wrong their cargo. So it was identified that the manifest information was wrong, and there was several cases on that. The problem which we see is that what if the cargo is correctly listed, is manifest correctly, but it's no longer the thing that it's supposed to be. We had several cases of calcium hypochlorite, which wasn't wrongly manifested. It was supposed to be calcium hypochlorite, and also some uh, cases of charcoal sticks from Bangladesh. These things are not supposed to self-combust, but they did, as you can see from the, from the picture. So what we've seen that helps is transparency, setting channels of communication from day one, and making sure that all the parties know what they have to do, a bit of preventing, taking on initiatives, and avoiding situations that will deteriorate. Things on these mega container ships tend to deteriorate very rapidly. Uh, so there's no doubt in anyone's minds that if you have a fire or a grounding or a casualty on these kind of ships, that it will be a major and it will have a lot of technical difficulties. The industry itself has identified uh, the special circumstances that the mega risks that associate with the mega container ship casualties. Uh, there was a technical subcommittee established several years back, uh, insurers, PNI clubs, salvos, classification societies, and ourselves. Uh, we are part of that together with the owners and the line operators that run these ships. And uh, we have identified certain problems which are going to share with you now. First question that everyone is asking uh, on a case like that is, what is the condition of the crew and the vessel? Although it's very easy to assess the condition of the crew on a case like that, you know how many crew you have, and then after the casualty, you just measure them. Unfortunately, in some of these cases, they counted less people. We all know what happened on several cases. Uh, to assess the situation of the vessel is not so easy. Uh, what we've done in this uh, technical subcommittee, information is key, but you have to see how and in which form you get the information. Uh, this uh, initial assessment form was compiled, and uh, if you want, I can send it to you. Uh, it's compiled by salvos, operators, it's partly pre-filled, so that the master at that point in time gives you the information you need. And what you need, you might be needing uh, salvage arrangements, you might be uh, requiring to see how many tacks, you might require to see what lighting operations. So all the information that you preliminarily need to assess uh, the situation are in that form. Uh, you can imagine what the lightering operations are like on a ship like that. Uh, I mean, a slight list, automatic twist locks, you cannot, there is a lot of technical problems. Uh, the willingness of the port authorities uh, is not the only issue in finding a port of refuge, uh, besides the IMO resolution, is also the size of these ships. Uh, some of the port authorities might have the specialized equipment you might need. This is in the port of Limassol, actually, when we brought the case. And some might, let's say, have the willingness, but don't have the expertise. And then you end up with catastrophic results. Uh, and unfortunately, this could have been avoided 100%. Um, if you, this forum is not really enough time to analyze this. If you really want to look into it, there was a mega box ship forum done under the International uh, London Week with uh, Safety for Sea. You can find it on the website, the discussion there, or you can ask me later. Uh, other initiatives from the industry for loss prevention, 
is a closed uh, group from mainline operators and owners of such vessels. When I say closed, I mean closed. No press, no insurance, no class, nothing. Just them discussing their own problems. Sounds a bit dodgy, but it's uh, well intended. Uh, at the end of the day, cases will happen. And why not call our trusted friend, General Average, to assist with this situation? Uh, General Average, for those who don't know what it is, it's the principle where you are provided with a mechanism that all the expenditure and sacrifice that has been incurred for the good of all is contributed by all. General Average allows for parties to take initiative and incur expenses and sustain sacrifices for the benefit of all parties, thus reducing the overall cost of the casualty. This is very important. I cannot stress enough how delays, avoiding to take action on casualties, uh, which involve mega container ships, can increase the overall cost, not twofold, but substantially. Having the comfort that the party advancing the funds will incur the sacrifice, but then be remunerated by all the other parties in that same adventure is a very big tool, and we should not lose that tool. It allows for swift action and is catalytic to mitigating and reducing the overall cost of a casualty. Um, I still have another 30 seconds, but in the meantime, I'd like to thank you <laughs> for waiting and staying over lunch uh, with uh, 20 people here. Thank you.